You're very welcome indeed to the evening show. On the program this evening, we take a close look at the process and the pitfalls of emigrating to Australia. And we'll be talking to migration agent and solicitor Maggie Dalton. Also, we'll be taking a look at ladies' golf and what the Solheim Cup, which happens from the 23rd to the 25th of September 2011, will have in store for our country and for tourism and for our economic coffers as well. Now, with the difficult job market here in Ireland at the moment, a lot of people are looking for pastures new and pastures greener down under. And to talk about some of the pitfalls of emigrating to Australia, we're joined now by solicitor and migration expert Maggie Dalton uh, to talk us through really what it is that we need to do if we're thinking of going down under. Maggie, you're very welcome indeed. Thank you very much. What is the main reason why Irish people are, are heading to Australia? Well, there are a couple of uh, different reasons. Um, first, firstly would be lifestyle um, and that uh, combined with uh, job prospects as well. So there's um, a good the moment, lifestyle down there, is there? There is a good lifestyle and I think the Irish have heard about this. I and think they might be <laughs> um, So uh, that coupled with, with better job prospects in Australia has been one of the major factors, particularly this year and last year with a lot of Irish people going to Australia for that reason. So are you at a recession down there or did you ever have one? I think Australia has managed to avoid a recession, to be honest, yeah. Um, it's, if you compare the two economies, the Irish economy um, and the Australian economy, the Australian economy has done very, very well. In fact, it's done very well uh, compared to a lot of other economies around the world. Okay. So it's a very attractive place for people to go who are using uh, economic factors as a real motivation. Right. And what are the main venues within Australia that, that are popular with Irish people? Um, I get a lot of inquiries from people about Perth and Western Australia, and there seems to be a growing community in, in Perth um, particularly, but other parts of Western Australia. Where, um, Australia. So mainly Western Australia, um, a lot of people are talking about Victoria now as well, which I hadn't really heard in uh, okay. you know a couple of years ago. It wasn't really Victoria wasn't really being mentioned a lot, but Victoria, uh, in particular the capital uh, capital city Melbourne, and um, there's always Sydney. That's a very yeah. very popular venue for Irish people. A lot of people have been out there, um, particularly when they were under 30 and they went out on a working holiday visa, spent a year over there. Um, lots of people go through Sydney first as the main place that they um, arrive. In and um, totally love it there. So you, I hear about a lot about Sydney, New South Wales as well. And when people come to you with their inquiries, first of all, are they talking? Are they normally people who would have relations in Australia anyway? Um, I guess it's about half and half. Right. You know? A lot of people don't have any relations in Australia at all. Um, but then on the other side of that, there's a lot of Irish people that do. They have um, brothers and sisters. Um, you know, cousins, um, aunts and uncles that have immigrated um, many years ago even. So um, it's, it's kind of a, I wouldn't say that's more one category of people who don't have a lot of relations in Australia. I think for Ireland, um, given the history and the relationship between Ireland and Australia and going back, you know, you have Irish people immigrating in the last 20 years, in the last 30 years even. Yeah. Um, and so there are a lot of people here in Ireland with, with relations in, in Australia and are looking to go and join those relations Let's talk about well. the process now, if we could, Maggie. If, say, for example, I want to close the door behind me here and head off to Bush mm -hmm. Television or whatever <laughs> down under. Yes. What's the first thing you will tell me to do? What's, what kind of advice do I get? Um, to anyone that's considering emigrating, I would say the first thing you can do for yourself is to get a reliable and decent assessment of your eligibility to emigrate. Okay? Um, I mean, emigrating is all about the visa, but then it's all about things like moving and buying property and finding schools for your children and things like that. But the first step is a visa. And there are many visa categories out there, so you must spend time getting some decent advice about what visa you'll be eligible for that will facilitate your move to Australia. Okay. Now, obviously, the building trade has been hammered here. A lot of the guys are looking for work. Um, what, what's it like down under? Um, from what I've heard, there are a lot of construction jobs in Australia, in particular in Western Australia. There's a mining boom, a natural resources boom happening in Western Australia at the moment. And there is um, a significant demand for um, 
tradesmen and particularly with Irish tradesmen, they're so well qualified, they're, um, they've got such a, a, a strong system of apprenticeships and vocational traineeship here that it's very easy for them to go to Australia and be able to um, get through that trade assessment process as well as, you know, culture as well, you know, right. English speaking country, a lot of the uh, Irish tradesmen clients that I would have have found it very easy to basically um, adapt to their new environment in Australia in terms of jobs and living there as well. Sounds good. And are there different types, different grades of visa? Yes, yes. Right. I mean, with the Australian migration system, it's basically split into two uh, categories, permanent visas and temporary visas. So when we're talking about temporary visas, for example, um, and you had um, a 26-year-old carpenter, for example, that wanted to go from Dublin to work in Australia, he could very easily get for himself a one-year working holiday visa okay. that would um, facil facilitate a travelling over to Australia and being able to work in Australia as well as travelling if that's what he wanted to do. And on this visa he could work up to six months with, with one employer and then move on to another job. Now that's temporary visas but permanent visas are more for emigrating and relocating permanently to Australia and having rights as a permanent resident. Take okay. for example a small family. A small family, yeah. yeah. And um, well with a small family um, a permanent visa would entail looking at um, the, the, in terms of the family unit, who's going to qualify as the main applicant for a permanent visa and has to be someone that has the right skilled occupation and the work experience and is of the right age. Okay. One and person. Will, one person will in the family, you. yes. Yeah. So say it, was, uh, say it was dad, okay, so it's dad and mum and two kids and yeah. dad, um, again using tradesman example, um, is able to qualify. Um, so he would be the main applicant and his wife and his two children would come along and be included in the application as, as uh, secondary applicants. Okay? Right. So dad then has to satisfy the primary criteria, but his family will come along and in, at the end of the, that process, they will all acquire a permanent residency visa. Okay. Do you have to have money in the bank going down under? It's not a requirement of the visa categories per se, okay? but uh, I mean, the reality of it is that emigrating is a, is a costly exercise <laughs> okay. um, in itself. I mean, if yeah. you're thinking about a family, again, the family of four, once they have their visa, they would have paid the associated costs of acquiring the visa. Um, then they would be planning their trip to Australia, and that would entail flights. Do know. they qualify for benefits when they arrive? On the permanent uh, residency visa, they won't qualify for social benefits for the first two years. Okay, right. um, but they are entitled to other things like obviously there's work entitlements on the visa to live and work wherever they like. Um, there are um, there's access to the national health care system, which is called Medicare, yep. as well. Then a, a lot of people also have private health insurance to to bridge right. the gap between the national health care system and their costs. Um, and uh, also, um, if you have a permanent visa, you're also entitled to. Um, study at any Australian institution like a, a university or college at domestic student fees as well. Okay. That's one of the benefits. And I mean the final kind of biggest thing about being a permanent resident is that it's a pathway to Australian citizenship as well. It's important to remember that with a permanent visa in time you should be eligible for Australian citizenship. Peggy, thank you very much Steve for coming in and talking to us. Thank you very Pleasure much for having me. And if you want more information on that it's the Immigration Agency Dot com. We're in the world of women's golf after the break. Join us for that.